Hi everyone, and welcome to another Microsoft Flight Simulator SDK tutorial. In this video, I'll be looking at how we can properly set up gates at our airports and then connect them to the terminal building using jetways, like you can see here in the background. But first, before we get started with that, let's just take a quick look at the differences between gates and ramps in the sim. I've got my airport opened up in the scenery editor here, and if I come across the objects panel and choose a taxiway parking, I'm going to choose a gate medium. Let's add that in here. We can see that we instantly get an error in the scenery editor on this little jetway thing that's been added underneath the parking that we need at least one scenery or sim object added to this jetway. That was because for the gates that you can add to the taxiway parking in the sim, you need to add a jetway to them. If you wanted to have a gate without a jetway, how you'd want to do that is you want to choose one of these ramp options instead like ramp GA medium or GA large, like I've got here. So this is a ramp GA large. And then you want to just set the name of that to gate. And then for all intents and purposes, that behaves the same as a gate would. So in the menu, it will show up as a gate when you want to spawn into the airport. And the ATC will refer to it as a gate, for example, when you want to taxi to it. Otherwise, we can go ahead and add a jetway to this gate. So I'll select the gate first and then come over to the jetway object. And that's the part that's highlighted in red currently. You then want to come to the properties panel and click on add sim object. Once the little panel pops up, search for Jetway, and then choose ASO underscore Jetway. Click Add, and then drag it where you need it to be. So I'm just going to drag it up here to the top left side of the gate. Next, we need to go back to the Jetway object, and now click Add Scenery. We want to scroll down and find Jetway underscore Link, and click Add there. That gives us this little two-part tunnel. And as we drag this close to the jetway, you can see it starts snapping onto that, like so. So I want to drag that up and just push the back side of it into the terminal building. So this is the same whether you're using a custom, custom terminal building or one of the pre-generated ones like I'm using here. You can then rotate these as you wish, and it will snap up together like that. And the same for the front part of the jetway. You can rotate that like so. So what we've got here is a sim object and the scenery object. So the sim object is the front part and that's the part that actually has the behavior in it. It will move out to the plane and connect to it when you request it and then disconnect and move back to its parking spot over here. This jetway link, the scenery object, is the part that just links it to the building. So like I said before, for the jetway, you need to have at least one object placed in here and it's a maximum of two objects. So I, if I was to go in here and choose jetway link again, you'd see now I get an error, not more than two children. So what you generally want in here is you want a sim object, which is the front part of the jetway, and you want a scenery object, which is the jetway link. You can add, for example, two scenery objects or two sim objects, but things might not work as expected if that's what you do. Something else to note is you can see the little green line here, the dashed green line between the jetway and the parking spot, and that's just an easy way to tell that you're actually dragging this jetway to the correct parking spot. For example, if I was dragging th this jetway over here, uh, without realizing that it was connected to this parking spot in the game, it would try and travel all the way over to the plane there. And that's probably not what you want. So now if we just come over here, I've got some of the jetway links lined up here and you can see the different sizes that we've got on offer. So the first one here, this is the jetway mega link. So this is a huge long jetway, pretty unrealistic because it's a massive long jetway with no supports like you can see there. And this one stretches uh, quite far. So you can see the maximum length of that is about this long. So if I drag that any further, it's still pointing towards the sim object, but it's not connecting. It's run out of length. And this will go all the way down and all the way back up like so. So this is if you've got a terminal building very far away, you can connect it up with that. The next one along is the standard jetway link. So you can see here if I select this one, we're about the maximum length of it is about that far. Drag it in, it compresses and then drag it out like so. And that's the one I was using over there. If we zoom in a bit further, we can see we've got two more little ones here. So the first one we've got is the mini link. So this is actually a two part jetway, except it doesn't pivot as easily as some of the other ones. So you could use this, for example, if your jetway just needed to connect straight into a building. And then the final one is the jetway micro. So this one is really, really tiny. Like so, it's just one segment of the jetway. For example, if you just needed to connect this part straight into a building. Remember that also you can place down jetways as scenery, normal scenery objects. So if I go over to here into the scenery panel, 
we can see all of the Jetway objects in here and we can place extra Jetway links if we wanted to. It's important to note that they don't behave the same as if they're on an actual Jetway so they won't compress and extend to join to the Jetway. So you have to bear that in mind when you're placing the machinery objects. So that's it for Jetways. They can be a bit fiddly at times when you're placing them down but once you get the hang of them it's pretty simple to get your gates connected up to the terminal and working correctly in the sim through the ATC menu. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like and subscribe to see more videos like this. If you've got any questions, or if there's anything you'd like me to cover in future tutorials, do let me know in the comment section down below. Until next time, thanks for watching.